Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I have compiled a list of some of the worst inflated vehicle models in the last 10 years. Cox Automotive tracks the new vehicle average transaction price, which is this chart you see right here. Now, this chart may seem crazy, but when you factor inflation, is it actually that bad? Well, luckily, there's also a dual chart showing inflation against the transaction price. Now, it looks like inflation and car prices were increasing together until around 2015, and then the new vehicle price started to outpace inflation. Well, I just got curious about about which vehicles specifically are the most guilty for that increase. So here's what I did. I made a list of 19 major vehicle brands in the United States. And then for each brand, I picked one car or small crossover, and then I picked one full-size SUV or truck. From there, I compared the 2014 MSRP to today's MSRP. And for this study, I stayed consistent and always used the cheapest trim type for that vehicle. Also keep in mind, inflation over the last 10 years is 33%. So what we are are looking for is an MSRP increase above 33%. I'll cover the top five most inflated cars or crossovers, and then also the top five SUVs and trucks. And let me tell you, I'm pretty sure these results will probably shock you. There are some cars that increase by only 20%, which is under inflation, but then there are some trucks that increase by as much as 50%. And if you make it to the end of the vehicle, I'll show you all 38 vehicles that I looked at and also the market average across all 38 of those vehicles. So let's get to it. Starting with cars and small crossovers, coming in at number five is the Porsche 911. 10 years ago, it was selling for $84,300 and now it's going for $114,400. That's a 35.7 increase, which really isn't that bad when you consider inflation at 33%. Number four is an increase of 36.6% and that belongs to the Volkswagen Jetta. Its cheapest trim type was once $15,695 and now that's selling for $21,400. $435. The number three spot belongs to the Ford Mustang. This kind of makes sense as 2024 is the first model year for the seventh generation Mustang. But this increase of 37.4% is a result of $22,510 going up to $30,920. Number two surprisingly goes to the Jeep Compass. In 2014, you could still buy this for less than $20,000, but now it's being sold for almost as much as $26,000, making that increase 37.8%. Now moving on to the number one position. Some might think this shouldn't count, but it belongs to the Genesis G80. The increase is a staggering 54.6%. In 2014, the Genesis G80 was just called the Hyundai Genesis, and it was sold for $35,200. By 2024, Genesis is now its own brand, and the sedan is called the G80 with a $54,400 price tag. Now, I don't think this price increase is just because Genesis created their own brand. The price increase is likely due to Genesis stepping up their luxury game, and the 2024 model is definitely evident of that. Now, other than Genesis, sedans and small crossovers are really not inflating by that much. Here's that table showing all the cars that I compared. Green means it's higher than inflation and yellow means it's below inflation. The vast majority of small vehicles are actually cheaper than the inflation rate. And I don't think many people expected that. But anyways, let's move on to the next category where the conclusion is very much different. Now for SUVs and trucks, number five belongs to the Ford F-150. In 10 years, this truck has increased from $25,000 to $35,570. This is a 46.1% increase in just 10 years. We are already 13 points higher than the inflation rate, and this is our first truck. Number four, unfortunately, goes to the Toyota Tundra with an increase of 52.5%. Now, part of this increase is because in 2014, you could buy a two-door regular cab Tundra, which obviously skews the price. But again, my study compares the cheapest option a consumer could buy, so the Tundra still takes fourth place. Number three goes to another truck, the Ram 1500. In 10 short years, the Ram 1500 increased from 25 grand to almost $40,000. This is a 57.3% increase, which is just insane to think about that the cheapest Ram you can actually purchase is almost $40,000.
For number two, we have another Porsche, and that is the Cayenne, a 59.7% increase in just 10 years. I think Porsche really wanted to separate the gap between the Cayenne and then the Macan, which likely increased the price of the Cayenne by nearly that 60%. And finally, the number one spot. This was probably not on anyone's radar, but a huge 66.9% increase. It is with the Nissan Frontier. What was once selling for just $18,000 is now selling for $30,000. I really don't know what to attribute this to. It is Nissan, but if you have any clue, please comment below what has separated the 2024 Nissan Frontier with the 2014 Nissan Frontier. As promised, here's another chart showing all the SUVs and trucks I compared. There's still plenty of vehicles that came in under the inflation rate, but the trucks that came above the inflation rate were just so high, it did make the average market increase for SUVs and trucks above the inflation rate. Now, before going into my final thoughts, I want to discuss one bonus vehicle, which is the Tesla Model S. This is one of the few vehicles that saw nearly no inflation. In 2014, the cheapest trim was selling for $69,900, and now it's being sold for just short of $75,000 which is only a 7% increase. As Teslas became more popular, I'm sure Tesla's manufacturing efficiencies have improved, as well as their long-term contracts for materials. But let me know why you think Tesla has managed to keep their prices so low against inflation, when it doesn't really seem like the other manufacturers were able to do the same thing. Now that I've shown you the data, here are my final thoughts. The increase in MSRP that I've shown you does not explain why the average transaction price has gone up by nearly 50% in the last 10 years. The average of the 38 cars that I picked just so happens to have gone up by 33%. I didn't even try to do that. I picked those cars completely at random, and yet the increase is 33%, and then the inflation rate is also 33%. So how has transaction price increased by almost 50%? Here are some factors I think is responsible for that increase. Now, I know people want to first blame dealer markups, but we have to acknowledge that the consumer is definitely at fault for dealer markups. Those dealer markups were most common at the higher end trim types. For example, the TRD Pro Tacomas and the TRD Pro 4Runners, and you know, maybe the Civic Type R and the Civic SIs. Also, more importantly, dealer markups became a problem in 2020. But as you can see from the transaction price chart, the transaction price began to separate from inflation rate really around 20. 14. So with dealer markups not being the exact culprit for this, I think number one variable is people switching from sedans to SUVs. The 2010s was the decade where sedans were out and SUVs were in. And since SUVs are more expensive than sedans, I'm not surprised that the average transaction price also increased along with that. It's not because of inflation or dealer markups, it's because consumers as a whole just started to switch to more expensive vehicles. Now the number two variable is about how we finance vehicles. The 2010s was a low interest rate decade, and also the average loan term is getting longer and longer every year. A five-year loan used to be average back in 2010, and now it's getting closer to a six-year loan being the average. So a six-year loan with a very low interest rate means you can afford a lot more car. And consumers were doing that to basically purchase big, expensive SUVs. And now this brings me to my final variable. Although we just showed how the lower end trim types basically kept up with inflation, that is absolutely not true with the higher end trim types for basically any vehicle. For the F-150 in 2014, the limited was the highest trim type, and now in 2024, you can get a Platinum Plus. The Platinum Plus is 62% more expensive than the 2014 Limited. In 2014, the Tundra had a Tundra Platinum for $44,500. Now Toyota has a brand new trim type called the Capstone, which increased the price by 77%. When you look at all the trim types for the 2024 Tundra, you have to ask yourself, what exactly is in the Capstone that makes, six, makes it 16 grand more expensive than the previous luxury trim type. Finally, another example is the Wrangler. A four-door Rubicon used to cost $35,000, but now for Wrangler, you can get the 392, which goes for almost $92,000, making this a 163% price increase. So to recap, I think consumers switching to SUVs and then leveraging low interest rates on longer loans, and then also buying 
crazy expensive SUVs at the higher end trim types is really what's responsible for this average transaction price increasing by so much in the last 10 years. It's really not actually the inflation rate. Now that's the data. Those are my conclusions. So let me know what you think. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you like content like this.